in Egypt times, it's a statue. It's called the mother of the bulls, but it's the black god. Why is the black god called the mother of the bulls in Egypt? As he, it's a phallic symbol. So it's a picture of the black god with his black fist up there like black power. And he's also holding his phallus in his hand, erect. And the representation of it is fecunditty. What is fecunditty? Fecunditty of the mind and fecunditty of the body represents, number one, for the body, sperm, right? Life energy, life force. And then of the mind, it represents ideas. When you have fecunditty of the mind, it represents, that's a person that has a lot of ideas, a lot of thoughts. You take chemical composition, you give it to the young bros, you have them eating the wrong foods, right? You create food deserts. Now their mind doesn't produce ideas anymore. You Frankenstein them. Frankenstein create the monster as Dr. Wesley broke down before. He creates the monster that is the nigga. The nigga is not one that's producing these great ideas. But he was jealous. He said, y'all got brilliance. Y'all got so many ideas. If left unattended to, you will all just build your own thing. You just grow. You will see whatever soil you left at. You still grow in. We've done the most unimaginable things, put you in horrendous conditions, and you still find a way to be brilliant because your mind is producing all of this fecunditty. All of these thoughts, all of this energy. You got that God spark. So a jealousy starts to occur. How the hell, during slavery time, we kept you away from reading. We kept you away from your own identity. You still are creating invention and innovating. You creating cotton gins. How? How are you creating filaments for the light bulb? And the whole time, we kept your ass in the dark. How you creating computer chips and cell phones? We didn't give you this great education. How is this happening? That you have natural brilliance. So when a man with ego has something that other man wants and desires, he becomes jealous. He don't want you to have it and he wants to have it. And he becomes envious. He wants your place. He wants what you have. So they cannibalize. Because they believed in antiquity, and this is history that you can go study, that what did they do? When you have an energy, the same way we eat food, and food is high in energy, we have to eat that food in order to get that energy. So they ate the black man and woman, figuratively, spiritually, as well, and physically. They cannibalized. They literally practice cannibalism during slavery. Even their sexual acts is a form of cannibalism. To steal the energy, to rob the energy. Because they seen you had something they didn't have and they believe that they could steal that energy from you. And they're still doing it. That's why they need the brilliance of these black men close to them. Patting them on the back. Slapping them on the ass. Giving them a little cash. They treat... These black corporate men, the same way black men treat black women in their videos. As hoes, twerking for a position, tweaking for some dollars. And they stealing your energy. And they utilize that and capitalize off that. They take your brilliance, put it in their algorithm, create a system. They see somebody brilliant. They say, can we give you a college degree? Can you come under our institution? Because we need to sprinkle our thoughts in it so that you can further our sto his, his story. You understand me? Further the thoughts that we gave you. Don't go and try to use all of that brilliance for your community. Nah, don't go do that. They can't do nothing for you. But guess what? They don't respect you. They don't understand you because we made them as niggas and niggas are ignorant and selfish. So guess what? You surrounded by niggas. We need you to leave because you wanted the brilliant ones. You're not like them. We can use you. But we need you first to think like us. So you can't be used against us. 
We don't want to put you in position only for you to utilize that position against us. And then once we bring you favor, you will fall in love with us. We will treat you like our own. You will be our child, our boy. We'll give you the game and great opportunity as long as you give games for us so we can maintain power and control. And then when we need to, we can say, look, we got you close. We can't be racist because huh, I don't hate this black guy that's here. Why? Because you are helping my institution of power. But how many can say that they wrapped in white boys of brilliance, brung them over to black America and used them to build institutions of black power? Where's that story at in history? Where's that story in history? It's not a story in history like that. And then, wait a minute, it wasn't enough that they got the black man destroyed him and his spirit. Then they went on to the woman. They said, wait a minute. Listen, man, we done broke you down. We got you calibrated. We done turned you into our favorite nigga and our favorite boy. Now it's time to work on your woman to destroy this institution forever. Because if we get to her, because she's so strong, look at her brilliance. Not only she got brilliance, she's built an institution. She has excellence. She's going through the education system. She's building the businesses up brick by brick. Your woman is the model. She's taking what the black man has in his brilliance, what the white man has in his excellence, and she's combining it. Now, she is the one that we need to prop up. But let's bring our women in to co-opt them into the movement and to make them feel as if they're separate from their men by not addressing them as black women. Address them as women. Make women the new minority. Separate the black women, the black man from it. Oh, this going to be a good plan because once we separate them... Then we get them thinking upon interracial integration, make them thoughts more progressive, bring them into political structure. And if a strong black man tries to come in and speak, make sure that you add a program in where they think that that's toxic. That's a good plan. I like it. Let's do that. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. So therefore, these beautiful black women never mate with these strong alpha black guys. We don't want them to get together. Make them feel as if the very thing that they attracted to is wrong. You see these artificial ingredients. It's how they get us. This is how they get us. This is how they de destroy us. And then we start working against each other. We start working on ourselves. See, she thinks that she's successful because she has the credentials of a white man. She has the credentials of a nigga he thinks he's successful because of the material things that he's obtained. Both are wrong. Both are wrong. Because both of them are without the institution of family. Matter of fact, the most dangerous two items, the dependent black man and the independent woman. Both are Frankensteins of white supremacy's intellect. If you have two of the most strongest forces in the universe, and all they got to do is come together. And this coming together is like a tesseract. This coming together is so strong that it has the ability to destroy the matrix that you created. Then you need to create within your system every fabrication you can to keep these things apart. Because the moment they come together without our interruption, there's nothing we can do. Their abortion rates go down. Their marriage rates go up. They found the institution, brilliance, and excellence come into one household, and we can never, we can never do better than the black man, and, black man and black woman coming together. We can't do no better than that. How can we compete against the black man and the black woman coming together? We can't. Not if they left to their own devices. There's nothing we can do. Game is over. Shit, they go build everything. Because guess what? We no longer will be using them. They will be utilizing each other. So all of the brilliance of the black woman is no longer used to protect white institutions. All of the brilliance of black man is no longer used to further white institutions. Instead, they say, listen, how about we create our own and we do for self and we believe in each other? How about Let's get rid of all of the distract. Let's, let's forget everything that they taught us. Let's get back down to the essence. Let's strip ourselves naked in America 
and let's look at each other as original man and original woman. Let's forget all the politics that surrounds our ideologies. Let's strip ourselves of the construct that was given to us in America and let's see each other for a moment. And in this essence, as I see you stripped away from all of the constructs of the city, from the buildings, from the titles, from the material. It is just man and woman naked in their essence, looking at God as they look at each other. And understanding as we look at God, we can create God. And if we create God, then we are God. And we are God. Then we should be the rulers. The beautiful imagination or where you go into that darkness and you see what they made you think of Adam and Eve as two naked white folks. You go back and you rewrite that history and you see an original man and an original woman in that essence story. That's when you get to shed all of the traumas. That's when you get to shed all of the fears. That's when you get to shed all of the pain. And y'all finally get to see each other for who you are. And for everything that you done been through and for everything they forgot and made us forget. They made us forget how beautiful our women was. They made us forget who we are as men. And as men, I mean mind. And they added so much filth on top of it that when we try to see each other, we're filtering the view of each other through the experience of white supremacy. The experience of white supremacy. When I see the black woman, you are filtering who she is through the experience of white supremacy. When the black woman looks at the man, she's filtering it through the experience of white supremacy. Because of what we experienced in the world, we can't see each other naked, pure, cosmic, in our essence. Can't see it no more. So we treat her bad. She treat us bad. As a reaction to our treatment to her. And she tries to find that very thing that she yearns so deeply for. In a black man. She tries to find it in her accomplishments. She tries to find it in a white man, Asian, Mexican, and everything. Because she yearns for you to see her again naked, stripped. As the original woman. That's all she wants to see. And he wants to be seen as God again. He wants to be seen as a creative force, as a maintainer. It's like you're the greatest inventor in the world, but you forgot everything you invented. And everybody acts as if they forgot that you invented it. But somewhere deep inside you, you know that this came from me. But you're so unappreciated that you feel hurt. And you don't no longer know who you are. So when other people look at you, you don't even want them to look at you. Because they know that they're looking at a lost man. They're looking at somebody who don't know himself. And he's trying to find himself in everything. So he looks to every man in every image saying that maybe I should be like this. Maybe that's who I am. And none of them are enough. And she knows Deep. That you are more than everything you're trying to be. And when she seen you bowing down to that other man, she said, maybe if I go with that man, maybe I can get a semblance of the power. Maybe he can remember who he is. She gets so hurt and so harmed and she no longer even wants to be with a man anymore. So she starts seeking a woman. Because the women remembered who the men are. It's in their DNA. It's in their womb. And now she feels like the closest thing I can get to someone seeing me is through another woman because they both starting to remember. And then he's so torn up that he is trying to look for himself. And he ended up being with another man. And they both are gone. They're both not even attracted to each other anymore because their energies have turned into a polarity to where they're now opposing. And so we have to reverse magnetize the energy And the way you reverse magnetize the energy is by giving 
the truth. The truth is an electrical energy and it charges up the mind and it changes the polarity. And as that changing of polarity gets charged, they start to turn back and see each other. Then they become an attractive force again. She said, oh, that black man standing up. That black man is building his own. That black man stands firm. He got a program. That black man is producing from his mind. I think he a God again. She starts to feel her DNA starts to compose towards him. She said, oh, I feel protected. I can be soft again. I can go back into my nurturing and my healing. Now, she's attracted to you on cosmic levels. Her DNA yearns for you. Her womb yearns for you. And now y'all become irresistible. The black man has a job to be impressive. When you impress upon a thing, you are making an impression into it. And when she has the mode of seeing her man back into the position of being God again, she starts to express the qualities of a God as well so that y'all can become together. Because guess what? Impression creates expression. But because we have not been impressed, we've been depressed. And then we create these illegitimate expressions of our energy because we are so much it has to go somewhere. And so we give them our passion to institutions that don't serve us because they will say, the white man will walk up to the black woman and say, hey, I like your hair. That's some nice hair. Must have taken long to do that, huh? And she said, thank you for noticing. Thank you. Because her host, Oshun, haven't noticed in eons the natural essence of who she is. So he tells her, he compliments her. It's not that he treats her better. He treats her different. He doesn't treat her better. He treats her different. You will listen if they say they just treat me different. Because the white man is not viewing her from white supremacy. He is the white supremacy. The black man views us through that lens. And now she takes all of her passion and she says, I will turn the states blue for you. I will turn the states blue for you. Don't worry, I will protect your Congress. I will protect your White House. I will protect your Constitution. I will be your representative in your house. I will uphold your democracy. And then the black man says, listen, don't worry, master. I'm going to protect your house too. I'm here. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to make sure that they don't harm you. I will be your greatest weapon against my own people to make sure that you feel comfortable here in your domain. So instead of all her passion and her womb energy being utilized for the goodness of our own world, because of all of the conditions that she has went through, she no longer feels that she can harness that energy for the black man anymore. She no longer feels you deserve her. So she wants to see if another man will treat her different. So she's going to give him the tools, the keys, even though she knows who he is. She knows. She sees him. She knows who he is. Because even the ones that get with one, they still claim to fight against them. She knows. But she says, I want to be treated differently. It don't matter. So she's going to give him all of the things. Because we don't have a world to use her for. See, Mac, black man, if you have nothing, then you have nothing to do with her. But see, the white man got all of these systems. He has a place for her to use at every level. So he gives her value. Where you have devalued, he's found value. He says, I got you. Don't you worry. Come work over here. Come build over here. You are brilliant. You can get all of the awards and accolades and whatever you want. Just continuously build over here. Hey, I also may need to use your womb because my woman is not producing the way she used to. And I need to make sure that survival of my race 
is insured. Can you help me with that? But then here comes a different story. There are black men who were born with this mindset and with the totality of observation through eons of time and looking at our conditions and our experiences and decide that they want to break the code. They want to break the rhythm. They, they see it and they want to see her and her nakedness and they want to see her for who she is. They want to see themselves again and they gain knowledge of cells and self and DNA to go into correctiveness. And they say, I will be the impression. I will be the impressiveness. I will be the black man. I will see her more than her body parts. I will see her more than who she is. I will see her. I will see her. And then they step up. They move. They build. They grow. And then she's looking like, well, I'm growing my thing, but I want one like that. And then he said, well, listen, I got you. It's a program over here. And then she starts to feel like, hmm, she rebels a little bit. But she says, ultimately, I, I think I can get with that. You remind me of my old son. You remind me deep, 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 deep in my DNA what I yearn for. You're speaking to that junk DNA that I can't even use anymore because it has no reason for activation. A woman that says that, hey, I just want to focus on my career. I don't want to use my womb. And then he comes around and gives you a reason for your womb to activate again. And he says, listen, I'm working on myself still. I'm building still. But guess what? I'm willing to build with you. And I'm willing to build you up if you're willing to build with me. I have a program. I know what your excellence can be used for. Here's the brilliance. If you're willing to help me with this, then we can be. And we can start with each other. Don't think about how many aren't started. Don't think about how big the world is. No. Think about what we can do because when two minds come together, they can create any entity possible. We can create God. And then all of a sudden, not her ideas of finding a prince charming. That doesn't exist. The ideas of Disney movies, that doesn't exist. Those are false. Those are not real. So she starts to destroy those and understand that this will be different. That this is not that story that we're creating. We are creating the story that destroys the world and build our own. And in that story, it will be tough. It won't be easy, but it will be worth it. Because we will be creating a generation that is born seeing each other for who they really are. And that is something that she can get with. Something bigger than herself, something bigger than him that they both submit to. And he says, I will lead you as long as you help me lead. And she can finally say, I can be in my softness, God. He asks her, not, don't call me king because we're not building a kingdom. We're building a nation. We're building heaven. And so there's work. There's conditioning. There's training that needs to be done. There's reinstituting a completely different order that has to happen. And there's private conversations that can never be public because we have to be strategic on how we move. That, babe, if you go in that world, you're only going in that world to grab supplies for our world. You're not going in that world to be comfortable with it. You're not going in that world to massage the ego with things of that world. Your Gucci bags, your Chanel bags. I know they make you look good. If we're going to do that, we're going to use it strategically. We're going to cipher that image so we can pull things over here and eventually build our world. But don't get caught up in it. Don't, baby, because we got something better. And I can't use you if you are in love with the very world that I'm working against. I can't use you if that's the case. And she can't use him if he's not building his own world. So people ask, why in the black world order, you got all these men up front? Oh, no. The women are the ones who are the operators of the system. They are the ones who make it excellent. We on the front lines, yes, but they holding down the base. And we don't need you to look at them as targets. Look at us. We'll take that. They feel protected being in private. Guess what? Working to build our own institutions so that finally a man can say, baby, we have our own. We don't need them. 
and she feels a different type of peace. Not a peace for her, but a peace for her future seeds. A peace that they will grow in the world where they don't have to fight for a position. A peace they they grow in a world where they are secure. Black man, black woman, I just want you to see yourselves. I want you to cry thinking about how beautiful we are. I want you to express yourself. And then I want you to write down your mission. What is your mission in life for us? Not for yourself. What is your mission for us? Then I want you to write down that vision. What does it look like? Then I want you to take a list of them and I need you to write down your values. What are your principles? Once you get your mission, vision, and values, this is what I need you to do. I need you to find someone that are aligned with your mission, your vision, and your values. Start from there.